Hi everyone, welcome to the first clip of this week's lecture on reflexivity and feminism. I mentioned, I think last week, that uh, in some ways uh, the first um, six sessions of this course, or at least the first kind of five substantial ones after the introduction, um, in some ways you can think of them as covering the really major basis of 20th century social theory to equip you all and acquaint you with some of the really central ideas in which uh, social anthropology, uh, in relation to which social anthropology uh, and cultural anthropology developed, uh, and also indeed the study of material culture studies, which we've been mentioning throughout the course and which is such a big feature of your training here at UCL. How these um, uh, intellectual projects uh, developed in relation to these theoretical currents of uh, sociology in its Durkheimian and its Weberian variety, uh, Marxism, uh, structuralism and so on. These are the kind of big theories uh, that whose influence continues extremely strongly uh, today in all sorts of ways and, and we'll see that uh, today as well how you know these classical thoughts and ideas kind of run through the way that anthropology continues to develop uh, up to this day. Uh, in, as of today's lecture, we begin to look at um, uh, ways of thinking that are more contemporary. Uh, again, I don't want to suggest that somehow Marxism or Durkheim or whatever are not relevant any longer. That's not in any way the truth. But we, we're really looking at more contemporary, but also more critical, crucially, approaches. Moments um, in which, uh, or not more than moments, uh, kind of pe a period in which, starting roughly in the 1970s, as we'll see today, in which anthropologists began to really question some of the things that they were taking for granted about their own ability to produce um, objective knowledge, for example. Uh, and those currents of thinking are, I think, incredibly uh, pertinent to the kinds of debates that are happening today in the discipline of anthropology and which I put on the table already in week one uh, when we were discussing very recent kind of um, questions regarding um, questions of decolon decolonizing uh, uh, anthropological thinking, questions about um, uh, anti-racist anthropology and so on, which are really, you know, very central to what everyone is thinking about uh, today in anthropology. Really, these kinds of currents of, uh, of thinking and questions are, have their roots, as we'll see, very much in things that began to happen in anthropology, as I say, roughly in the 1960s, 70s, and came to a head in the 1980s, which is really probably a real turning point in anthropology, uh, in which the central concept that we're looking at today becomes a real tag word, uh, the concept of reflexivity, the concept that we need to take seriously as anthropologists, our own positionality, the fact that we never speak from a neutral position. Uh, and if we don't take that into account in our attempts to understand the people with whom we're studying, uh, then the knowledge that we produce uh, is incomplete, but also dangerous politically, but also epistemically dangerous. Our claims to truth uh, are distortive in many ways of the very activity that produced them and not, in not taking into account that activity, which is what reflexivity asks you to do, uh, take into account the way in which you're producing the knowledge that you're producing, uh, means that the knowledge that you end up producing is um, uh, poorer, uh, is weaker, uh, uh, is less uh, worthy of taking it into consideration, right? That's a kind of central claim that reflexivity is making. And I think these claims about positionality, about the lack of uh, the kind of fantasy of neutrality that needs to be uh, criticized and deconstructed, uh, these are all uh, really, really live questions today. So I think, uh, you know, we saw in recent weeks the ways in which Bourdieu uh, and indeed kind of Marxist approaches more broadly, but particularly uh, the way in which, um, you know, questions of inequality, of structural violence, of cultural capital, um, structural racism, uh, feature in practice theories such as that of Bourdieu are really, really contemporary. Uh, even though they were written a number of decades ago, they really influence the ways in which debates that are taking place 
within the social sciences in general and in anthropology in particular today are being formulated, well, the same goes very much for the topic that we're looking at this week, which is reflexivity. Now, you'll notice, of course, that I have paired up reflexivity with uh, the other word feminism, uh, which I'll be devoting some uh, time to examining uh, in this week's lecture, alongside uh, post-colonial approaches, which we'll be looking at next week. Feminism is one of the major uh, kind of um, uh, currents of anthropological research uh, that developed again in the 60s, 70s and 80s, which really led or helped to create the conditions for these kinds of arguments about reflexivity that I'm talking about. So feminism and the way in which uh, anthropology's um, uh, orientation when it came to questions of gender, uh, first women specifically and then gender more broadly, uh, developed and shifted over the decades of the 60s, the 70s and the 80s, um, is really a central part of the story uh, of how we arrived at this sensitivity to positionality in the production of anthropological knowledge that reflexivity um, is so emphatic about. Okay, um, I will leave it there for this clip um, and I'll see you in the next one.